Okay, before we start the technique, really, there are still two things that we need to consider. First thing is dimming the lights. Ideally, you'd like to perform this in a dimly lit room, but obviously for the purposes of video, we can't. And you'd also may consider using eye drops to dilate the pupils. You'd only do this with some informed consent from the patient, and you would definitely need supervision as a medical student. So, also, when we, before we start, we make sure the patient is all right. Are you comfortable there, Matt? Just thank you. And you tell him to look straight ahead into the distance. My, I, my head might come in the way of your vision, but can you please focus as far as you can into the distance? Sure. Thank you very much. So, we're ready to start now. Make sure the ophthalmoscope is on, so. Matt, I'm going to put my hand on your head. So it's good to put your hand on the patient's head so you know where you are and so you don't bash into the patient as you come closer. And remember to use your right eye to the patient's right eye to avoid rubbing noses with the patient. And likewise, your left eye with the patient's left eye. So now we're ready to do the ophthalmoscopy. Make sure the ophthalmoscope is on and take off your glasses if you have them on. So, make sure the ophthalmoscope is on plus 10. Put your hand on the patient, just for a massive eye, put my hand on you. And from 30 centimetres away, look for the red eye reflex. This is like you get when you take a picture with a camera and it flashes. I can see the red eye reflex and that's fine in this eye. So, having seen the red eye reflex, I would move in, focusing and dialing down the numbers as I get closer and closer to his eye. Okay. And once I'm in the eye, I search for the optic disc. We'll show you a picture later, but the optic disc is an area of a white circle. If you can't find the optic disc, it's worth looking for blood vessels, because all the blood vessels trace back to the optic disc. So, you look for any abnormalities of the optic disc itself. You may look at the colour, the size and the borders. Once you've found the optic disc, you would look at the vessels. So I'm going to demonstrate this, and you trace the vessels to the quadrants. So, Matt, I'm just going to put my hand on you again. Keep looking into the distance, please. I'm coming in again, red eye reflex, focusing in, focusing in, right in. Okay, I've now focused on the retina, looking for the blood vessels, tracing them to all four quadrants of the eye. The upper nasal, the lower nasal, the lower temporal quadrant, and sorry, the upper temporal quadrant. So having identified any abnormalities of the vessels in all four quadrants and the optic disc, the final thing we look at are the macula and the fovea. The macula is a slightly darkly pigmented area, two optic disc widths from the optic disc. So, Matt, is it right? One last time? Yep. Just put my hand on that again. Again, looking for the red reflex. Focusing in, and somewhere two discs away from the optic disc near the middle, you may find the pigmented area of the macula. And Matt, can you look straight into the light? And there you might see the fovea when the patient looks straight into the light. It's worth remembering that when you focus on the macula and the fovea, the fovea in particular is particularly bright for the patient to look straight into the light, and this can be uncomfortable, so don't look at it for too long. So, once you've done this eye, you thank the patient, and if you need to, you do the other eye. So thank you very much, Matt, that's all we'll do today. And then, of course, you would go and document and report any abnormalities to a colleague. So, having done the procedure and thanked the patient, it's worth remembering that this procedure is actually done as a whole. And I've demonstrated it in three parts here, looking at the optic disc, the quadrants, and the macula. But you want to do it as a whole and one movement rather than look, focusing three times on the retina.